Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. This week I want to show you a piece inspired by the YouTube Artist Collective theme for September, which was Urban Legends. I actually had this idea um, for this piece back at the end of July and I, I did really want to get it done for when the YouTube Artist Collective um, put up their pieces at the beginning of September but I have just been so busy, uh, it's my birthday at the beginning of September, we had family over, um, I went to Stockholm Comic Con so I've only just got round to painting this piece after a busy few weeks. Um, so the theme was Urban Legends and I decided to take a Swedish urban legend. So this um, piece is inspired by the Swedish urban legend called the Skogsrå, which means mythical forest creature. Um, it's always a woman and she goes by several other names, mistress of the forest, the forest nymph, the forest sprite, um, and she even exists in, uh, in, no in, no how do you say, in, oh, stories from Norway and back and Denmark as well with other names like Huldra um, but she sometimes is said to take care of the animals in the forest and other times she's just a, a creature that lives in the forest herself but from the front she looks like a beautiful young woman um, but from behind she is said to have a hole in her back like a hollow old tree and uh, sometimes even a fox's tail or um, other certain animals' tales in in stories from certain other parts of Sweden. Um, so depending on where you hear the story, um, it can be slightly different, um, the kind of details. But she is careful to only show herself from the front and she entices often hunters and those that are lost in the woods with her beauty um, so that they disappear and then after that they are never seen again. So for this piece I knew I wanted a girl looking over her shoulder showing the skulk's roar from the back but this pose was actually really really difficult and I went through several iterations uh, of several sketches before I finally got to one that I was happy with. I was trying to use references um, but it's quite an unusual pose and most of the references just show the top half of the body without the legs and the feet and that was actually the part that I had the most problem with. I, I swear I must have redrawn her feet around 20 to 30 times and I'm still not entirely convinced that they are pointing in the right direction but it was the best I could manage. I even tried to take photos of myself in the same pose but it was kind of hard. I needed to twist my body and take the photo and it just it didn't work. Um, so yeah, now feet are on my list of things to practice along with everything else because they are a lot harder than they look. But anyway, when I was finally happy with my sketch, I traced the image onto some watercolour paper and for this piece I am using Archer's 300 uh, GSM cold pressed paper and it's, I can't remember the exact size, it's, it's just a little bit longer than an A5 size. Um, but I wanted to do the background first with this piece, so I masked off the girl with a Pebio masking pen and that is the blue stuff that you can see around the girl while I am painting in the background and that's why she looks a bit strange to start with. Um, but I started off doing wet on wet so that I got some nice blurry distant trees in the background and then after that had dried I went in and added some more defined trees and foliage in the midground. Um, so that, uh, yeah, just to bring some more definition really. However, do not ask me what is going on with the bushes in the middle. I just couldn't get them to look as 3D as they were in my head. They just didn't really turn out how I wanted them to. But anyway, once the background was finished and dry, I took off the masking fluid with an eraser. It worked really well and didn't rip the paper, which I know can be a problem with masking fluids sometimes. Um, the only thing that I noticed that there was a couple of areas where the ma um, masking fluid had slightly stained the paper and I tried to rub it off a bit more vigorously and it did mostly come off but there was just a couple of small blue stains. Uh, luckily it wasn't really that visible once I'd painted over it, so I was pretty impressed with this marking, ma 
masking fluid. So although by erasing the masking fluid I did also erase some of my guidelines which did mean it was a little bit hard, I was a little bit uncertain later on when I went to put in her eyes and lips. I was unsure where they were meant to be um, but I think I, I managed to put them where they were supposed to be. So onto the girl, I wanted her dress to be a beautiful rich velvety green colour to match the forest um, and I did that just by using the same colours that I'd used in the forest but just in a really concentrated manner, especially around the back where it was in more shadow and that way I managed to get quite some good, some good shading on the dress I think, I really was impressed with how that turned out. And then I added um, some gold trim, just to give a little bit of a sense of regalness. I, uh, I felt that if she was going to be like a really beautiful girl, then she was probably also quite regal and uh, quite posh. Um, I was at first intending maybe to go back in and add some detail on, her, on the gold trim, uh, but I decided against it at the end. Because of the paper being cold pressed, it's got a slight texture which means that if I'd used pencils it would have blunted them and the and the pattern would have just been too big I think and I'm not that skilled at using a paintbrush to be able to go in with that much detail so I just decided to leave it blank but I think it looks good anyway and then I painted her hair in a reddish brownish colour to match her tail um, the fox's tail and uh, so that was basically my colour choices. So once the paint was dry, I added her eyes and mouth with a polychromous colour pencil. And while doing that, I decided that I needed to start working at a larger scale um, so that I don't actually have so much trouble trying to add these teeny tiny details right at the end. Um, you can't see here because I cut it out, but those eyes got rubbed out three times before I finally got my pencil sharp enough to do them small enough. So anyway, this is my painting of the Skulk's Roar and I'm really interested, do you have any similar urban legends where you live or any other really interesting urban legends? I would love to know. Sweden has got several others and maybe one day I will um, paint more urban legend inspired art because I really enjoyed doing this piece. Before I go, I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to every one of you that watch my videos, that like, that have subscribed and comment, or even just lurk. Uh, tomorrow is my one year of posting videos on YouTube birthday and I have really loved making all these videos and connecting with so many of you wonderful people on YouTube. Uh, so hopefully this is the first of many YouTube birthdays and uh, I have the energy to keep going and keep making my art and keep putting it out here and I really hope that you keep enjoying it. Um, if this is your first time here you are really welcome. I really hope you enjoy what you see and want to stick around. I make weekly art videos in a variety of different mediums and if there is something that you'd like to see me draw or an art supply that you want to see me test then do please leave your suggestions down below. I would love to know what you would like to see more of on this channel and uh, I, I love testing new art supplies so I'm always up for always up for that. So anyway I really hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you in my next video. Bye!